Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro channel. This right here is a Commodore 1802 monitor that I picked up recently off eBay and the reason I wanted it is not because of its feature set or its screen or its appearance. It is because this is what I had growing up as a kid. Obviously not this exact monitor but this model. There are different 1802 models out there and most of them are even more ugly than this one. So um, yeah, this is it. I did actually film an unboxing of this and the reason for that is because it arrived with fairly minimal packaging, let's just say that. So I did kind of film that just as a backup in case things were broken and I could at least say to the seller, look, this is how it came. Um, so we're gonna see that in a minute and fair warning, I was uh, quite annoyed uh, when it first arrived, so bear that in mind. Um, but yes, it does kind of work as we'll get into. There is a little bit of a repair job here, but uh, it was also quite filthy when it first arrived. So um, yeah, let's get into it, start off with the unboxing and go from there. So this right here is a Commodore monitor that I just received that I bought off eBay. And uh, just looking at it from the outside, I can see that there is not a heavy amount of packaging here. In fact, I can see the monitor looking through this hole. So I'm a little bit concerned about what we're gonna find inside. Now it was sold as not working, um, which is fine, but it did look to be intact. So we shall see. Where's my knife gone? Okay. Now the seller showed it uh, as running, but he couldn't get color out from it, or they couldn't get color out from it. So, um, yeah. Yes, no packaging on the top, just some air fill. And just those air things around this side too. Wow. At the front, there's just an empty cardboard box. And some more air packets that have popped already. There is literally nothing under the CRT itself. It's just the bottom of the box. <sighs> wow. Well, there's no stray pieces in the box, so it's kind of reassuring. Well, it looks to have survived. I mean, it actually looked a little bit worse in the listing photos. It is missing the front door, but uh, can deal with that later. Um, but the case does not look to be cracked anywhere. So um, yeah, I guess they got lucky this time, but I mean, you're shipping a CRT. So don't just throw it in a box with some fucking bubble wrap or air cushion things. And that's it. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, luckily for the seller, it survived. Otherwise I would have been making a claim, but um, nothing rattling inside. So that's a good sign. Now, this isn't one of the best Commodore monitors. I don't recommend seeking this one out specifically. It does have uh, Luma Chroma input, uh, as well as a monochrome input and a couple of audio inputs. But the reason I wanted it is because this is the monitor I had with my Commodore 64C growing up. So I want to try and get this thing working and um, hopefully relive a little bit of nostalgia. So um, I guess the only thing left to do now is power it on and see what happens. Hopefully 
it still powers up because the seller did show it as powering up, just he couldn't get color out of it. They couldn't get color out of it. Really not good with those pronouns. Pronouns? Anyway, it's in one piece. The screen's a little dirty, but it doesn't look to be scratched at all. <sighs> wow. All right, so now that I've had a chance to calm down, I want to power this thing on. Now, normally with something like this, I'd want to open it up first and then power it on. But given the seller has only recently powered this on by the looks of it, there's probably no point. Uh, the reason I'd normally have it open is so that I, and I guess you, can see if anything explodes or goes pop, and it's easier to track things down if you can see them exploding. But uh, I think there's no point in this case, so let's just plug it in and power it on. Um, but before I do that, I do want to sort out this uh, power plug here, because it is quite nasty. I'm guessing this was stored in a fairly humid environment, so um, yeah. Who knows what we're going to find when we do eventually open it up, but for now, I just want to clean this up and just plug it in and see what happens. All right, the plug is a lot cleaner now. Uh, these alcohol wipes and cotton buds, not so much. But I just went over the cable as well just to clean that up a little bit. So, um, yeah, let's plug it in and see what happens. Nope, nothing so far. There we go. So that's probably a good sign because hopefully that means all our colors are working. Seems everything has turned up really high though. Okay. Let's uh, connect something up to it. All right, I'm gonna use Commodore 64 with Luma Chroma. Uh, see how nice the image looks. And if we can get some color. Commodore is on, nothing on the screen. There's no controls on the back, so everything's on the front. And uh, <laughs> it is currently set. So there's a switch down here for composite input, separate Luma Chroma and monochrome input, and it is set to monochrome. So what are the chances that just flicking that switch will make it work? Yeah. Sweet. Well, problem solved. It's fixed. Why am I running in 60 frames per second? Uh, let me just switch the camera over just so we don't have that rolling bar on the screen. All right, that's better. So we won't see that rolling bar going through the screen. You might see a line every so often going down, but that's just from the camera. That's not actually visible in real life. So. Um, yeah, it uh, looks quite good. I actually can't really see it that well from here, but there's definitely color in there. So winner, winner. That's pretty funny. But I guess you get that sometimes, you know, if people aren't familiar with a certain thing, then they may not know how to use it and assume that it doesn't work, or at least it doesn't work properly. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Let me just uh, get a little test program up. Just move the monitor so hopefully there's not as much reflection on the screen, but yes, this is the test build. And that color in the background is supposed to be sort of a orangey or Commodore Brown. So it's supposed to look a little bit more like that. And that's just a white, that's a red. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Green, blue. Yeah, there is definitely a bit of separation in these white lines. Uh, down in this corner here, there's a bit of dynamic convergence issue and the red is separating out of, the, out of those lines. So not perfect. Oh yeah, and that really shows a lot of separation. 
I don't know how well you'll be able to see it in the camera, but there's definitely some separation in those white lines. So the convergence is a little bit off, but all in all, it's not too bad. We definitely have color. And this is only a 40 column monitor, so it's not super high resolution, I don't think, but it looks quite good, especially, you know, just for a C64 with Luma Chroma output. It's not too bad. Hmm. All right, well, let's open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so it looks like we've got two screws up the top, one at the back here holding this panel in place, and yep, two on the bottom. I think that sh should be it. All right, that's our screws out. Uh, I think we just need to unhook this power cable out of this little channel here. And then it should slide off. Cool. Looking in the back. There's a bit of dust and crap, but it's not too bad. Mm. And inside there is a dead spider. And the CRT, like it, it, there's not, there's not a lot of dust in here. And usually this anode cable would be covered in dust, but because it kind of attracts dust getting all staticky, but there's not much there, not much at all. So whether or not it's been cleaned out, I don't think so. I mean, there's still dust around the place, but definitely very little. Um, there's a bit of rust around this yoke part here, which is a bit of a worry. So yeah, I think this has been stored in a humid environment, but possibly hasn't got many hours of use on it. So there's a bit of dust, but I'll tear this down and clean it out. And then uh, we might make some little fine tuning adjustments and see how good we can get this thing to look. So I'm not seeing any signs of damaged components, but I'll do a full tear down and inspect everything a little bit closer. But uh, yeah, it looks half decent apart from this little bit of rust. So I've just grounded this alligator clip to one of the ears here, and uh, we just slide the other end under the anode. See if we get a pop. Actually, I'll see if I can lift this up. And we can see the little spark action. I think um, like in some of Sony's like PVM service manuals, they actually recommend lifting the anode cap up with your hand and then disconnecting it and discharging. But yeah, I'm not game enough to try and do that. I don't want to get my hand that close to the anode cap personally. It's not going to flip back. I'm just going to put it in and see if we hear a click. It was like the tiniest little lame. I'm just making sure, yes, we're definitely connected to ground. So yeah, nothing much stored up in there, unfortunately. No fun this time. It must self discharge pretty quick. Nothing going on. All right, so that's the board removed. Now, when I go to reassemble this, I will discharge the CRT again because they do have a tendency to rebuild charge somehow, magic. Uh, the only thing to worry about on this board is probably this big capacitor here, which is no doubt a 400 volt one for the switch mode power supply. And maybe a couple of these other big ones could be high voltage. So we wanna make sure they're discharged as well just before we go randomly touching the board. Now, of course, you could just short across the terminals. That is a way to do it. Uh, this multimeter here actually has a low Z mode, so it can be used for discharging caps or just checking if they have any charge in them at all. And we just connect it across the terminals. See if I can get this in shot. Can we see the multimeter? Yes. And there was nothing in there. 
Nothing at all. Nothing at all. A uh, couple of other capacitors. There's one here, nothing there. There's one there. Yeah, everything looks to be at zero volts. So no issues, no safety concerns here. Cool. I am gonna clean this thing up and take a closer look. Doesn't seem too bad. Actually this, I thought that was painted on, but all this stuff is actually some kind of build up around the f this front section, which would have sat under the CRT. So maybe moisture from this bottom vent here has come up through there. Um, Cause that would have been shielded by the CRT and it's only this rear part that would have been exposed behind the back of the CRT and the vents on top of the monitor, if that makes sense. So you'd expect to see some dust back here and less up here, but yeah, not this sort of crud that I'm seeing. Anyway, I'll clean it up, see how we go. All right, after the massive cleanup effort, uh, things look a lot better. The board itself looks near new. Uh, can't really say new because it's not, but it's definitely clean now. So I guess the only thing left to do is power it on, make sure that it still works and that I haven't broken something. Normally I wouldn't go all out cleaning one of these boards, um, but in this case, because it was so, you know, scummy, gross, grimy, I decided to go over it with Q-tips and just clean the whole thing. Um, it could potentially break something. Uh, if there was like a bad solder joint somewhere, I may have, you know, knocked that out of place, but I'd rather do that now than have it just die randomly in a few years time or whatever. So, um, I don't know, let's just power it on, see if it still works and doesn't explode. We are plugged in. Well, it's high voltage still, that's a good sign. And I can see in the camera that we do have an image. Cool. Uh, bring the C64 back out. Power on. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why? Oh, I'm set to composite. There we go. Why is that buzzing at me? So the speaker's buzzing, but it seems to stop as I jiggle around this switch. The switch is very loose. In fact, it's too loose. Ew. I think, remember what I was saying about bad solder joints? I think I just found it. And that's possibly why the seller thought it was only in black and white because the switch is busted and it may have been stuck in monochrome. That's kind of funny. Um, all right, I'll pull the board out, resolder this switch. Look at that. Okay. So it is a repair video, yay. Yep, there are some bad solder joints on that switch. Almost all of them are broken. Nasty. And it would seem one of the legs is completely broken. Look at this. I'm gonna have to pull that out. All right, well, here's our switch and the pin that's broken off is this one here. So, um, I don't know if that's gonna be an issue. I'll have to test the switch and see what the, um, each pin does, but. Oh, 
I'm pretty sure this thing is busted. In fact, it's only going into two positions and not moving into the third. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I think better off just replacing this switch. It looks pretty standard. It's just got this little extra cover extender thing on it. So yeah, I think I'll just replace the switch. Hopefully I've got another one. Otherwise, um, that's kind of lame if I don't. Right, so it turns out I didn't have a spare switch on hand. So at the moment, it's just hardwired to the separate Luma Chroma input. But as you can probably see just from Super Mario World here, it looks like complete ass. This thing needs a lot of adjustments and most of the useful stuff is on the inside. It's got vertical hold, vertical height and horizontal position. So yeah, all the fun stuff is definitely on the inside. And looking in the 240p test suite, yeah, everything looks like complete rubbish. You can probably see that if I turn the brightness down even further, all right, that's the brightness down all the way. You can see that the blue bar definitely has a lot more uh, luminance to it, even at the lowest brightness. So there definitely needs to be some color adjustment and likewise, uh, some sub brightness adjustment. And if we bring up the monoscope pattern, um, yeah, there's a lot of separation going on pretty much across the board. Um, everything here should be white squares apart from these red lines. And yeah, the red lines have blue lines below them. The white squares have color separation coming out of the sides and top and bottom. So yeah, this thing is all over the shop. And the worst part is probably this top corner here, which funnily enough is where they've put a convergence strip, uh, which looks to be from factory and it is the worst corner of all. So either things have shifted around quite a bit or maybe that corner is even worse when I remove that convergence strip, but that is gonna be something for next time. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video showing how to adjust all these things, because to be honest, I'm not the best at it, I can do it, but it probably takes me a lot longer than a competent CRP, CRT adjustment guru. So um, I will do that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll film it, it'll probably take me quite a while. And we'll come back to this CRT sometime in the future once that switch arrives and uh, hopefully I can get a replacement 3D printed front door panel and yeah get some of these adjustments done and hopefully get this thing looking at least half decent in the end there's only one reason i wanted this monitor and that was you know nostalgia purposes if you're looking for a commodore cit um the 1084 or the 1084s definitely the way to go they do rgb you, you know all your common inputs this just has composite luma and monochrome for some reason maybe for the commodore 128 mode i don't know anyway that's going to be it for this episode a massive thanks to the people that support the channel on patreon and youtube memberships thank you all for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed it i'll put some images up of how it looked before and after because i did spend a lot of time cleaning this up i didn't really take pictures of it beforehand though but i'll cobble something together and um yeah as always thanks for watching throw comments down below like subscribe blah 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 and catch you in the next one bye everyone and welcome to the retro channel this here is a commodore 10 what is it 1802